What's up guys? Welcome to Anime Kahai. If you want to help me out, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Before I could reply, Ellen broke into the conversation. She was seated adjacent to Elmija, and the way they carried on, they seemed like two loving sisters more than anything. I knew they were related by blood and all, but Ellen was acting shockingly familiar with the emperor of a dynasty. Meanwhile Erald, her father, was already going pale and shouting. Ellen? In a high-pitched voice. Your Excellency, I know Ellen is my daughter, but please refrain from spoiling her, if you would. And, Ellen, you will not call Her Majesty, Ellie. Erald certainly can be loud, hmm? Oh I know, Dad's always exaggerating like that. Man, these two girls put together may be downright dangerous. I felt bad for Erald. It was really shocking, how perfectly in sync Ellen and Elmija were. They probably were close friends, not just acting that way. Given the high fives they occasionally gave each other, the class system hardly seemed to exist at all with them. Elmija Elru Thalion, Her Excellency the Emperor of Thalion, a figure who not even national leaders from the Western nations could gain an audience with, seemed like a much different woman here. The royal night guard behind her looked just as surprised. Members of the Magus, what you are seeing here is a state secret. Do not divulge it to anyone else. Erald saw fit to give that order, but I wasn't sure how much it'd be followed. And so, Elmija continued, paying him little mind. I would like you to send engineers from Tempest to our nation. This is an official request, of course, so I will gladly pay you for the guidance they will offer. Do you want us to send manpower your way? That's right. If you want to keep your core technology a secret, you could always just send us whatever complete tools or resources we may need instead. Hmm. So we'd need a way to export the parts we make here over to Thalion. We needed to tackle a few issues before I could grant Elmija's request. The pipes used in our kitchens, toilets, and bathrooms were manufactured using technology from Kaijin and the other dwarves. I wasn't sure if Thalion's engineers could recreate it, and teaching them from scratch would take too long. Instead, it'd be much easier to just manufacture the needed parts here and send them over to Thalion. And while you're at it, perhaps you could transport them via that Tron system you were talking about? I can provide the funding, so I hope you can begin developing that at once. It was like she was reading my mind. Gazel had a mind-reading skill or two, I knew, but was that the case for Elmija as well? It didn't seem that way to me, but I'd better keep my guard up. Regardless, though, her offer was worth considering. We haven't gotten around to developing an actual train yet, no. If some of your, sorcerous science, experts might be able to help with that, I'd appreciate it. Of course they can, Erald? Yes, your excellency, I will send word out promptly. Erald was still undauntingly faithful to Elmija. He seemed more like a useful servant to her than a high-ranking noble. Gazel looked at him, his eyes piteous, the dwarven king told me not even he could boss Elmija around, so Erald's behavior must have given him something to think about. Thus Elmija, emperor of the sorceress dynasty of Thalion, was interested in teaming up with us. We'd no doubt sign a technology-sharing agreement and begin tandem research before too long. With Thalion's sorceress science and Dwargan's pioneering work in elemental engineering, Linking these distant lands together might not be a dream after all. The overcomers, Luminous planned to send our way might be able to help out, too. I'd need to see what they were like first, but maybe they'd provide some useful input. This is a great thing to hear, Lady Elmija. It ought to vastly accelerate development. We may just see, Magitrains become practical for regular use sooner than we think. Oh, you call those, Magitrains? Yeah, my basic idea is to develop, spirit cores, or spirit magic-driven power reactors, then install them into a sorcerous science-based control system. Sounds perfect, right? Ha, huh, you make it sound so easy. How fascinating. Very fascinating indeed. I hope we can see it sooner rather than later. Gazel must have thought I was far too optimistic, but his smiling face told me he was sure I'd manage it. Seeing him like that, I don't think he was really one to talk about, going out of control, on projects like this. Elmija, meanwhile, looked like a girl who found a new toy, her expression astoundingly bright. It left quite an impression, much unlike the depressed-looking Erald by her. This definitely would accelerate development, for sure. Alright, in that case, we'll start by laying down rails to Thalion first. We can do that alongside our highway construction, so that'll save us some time. If we were leading the project, it'd be easy to make sure it was all unified under the same standards. Completing the rail network first shouldn't be an issue, I thought, but... Wait, Sir Benamaru suggested the concept of a tunnel to me at our meeting. 
Will you be needing one of those in the future? The question came from Mamiji, an unexpected participant. If she was asking whether tunnels would be necessary, was she saying Thalion was open to us blasting one into their mountains? If possible, I would like to open one in the future. Our first order of business is building a rail nexus in Blumend. From there, we'll go through the kingdom of Farmanus and connect to the western entrance into Dwargon. Meanwhile, we plan to lay track south of Blumend as well, eventually winding up in Thalion. If we try to go through the western nations, we'd get tied up acquiring land use rights and such. In other words, if we detour the track around the mountains, it'll lead to huge losses. At the same time, though, we don't want to force you into anything you don't want to do. I understand. I will trust in you, Sir Rimuru. If you can guarantee that it will not affect our mountains, I am willing to give you permission to build this tunnel. For real? Yes. Um, for real. But as a personal request, I hope you will enlist Sir Benamaru to overlook this. Momiji's cheeks reddened as she spoke. I didn't need her to finish the thought. Benamaru. Wait a second, are you trying to sell me off, Sir Rimuru? Don't make it sound like that. Geld's in the middle of a big job, too, you know. We'll need someone good at leading people, and you're the best guy we have. Geld nodded at me. Benamaru, meanwhile, looked like I was driving him up the wall. I'm afraid it's just not possible. I don't know anything about construction. No, I bet not. Ah oh, yes, yes, it may not be possible, huh? And here I thought I could sacrifice Benamaru and get this whole thing wrapped up fast. Things never quite work out like that, I suppose. I didn't want Benamaru out of town for that long anyway, so this idea was a stretch from the start. Well, sorry, but Benamaru's my right-hand man here. Perhaps he could join me during my regular visits to inspect our progress, but... Oh, that's fine, too. As long as he will visit our homelands when you do. Mamiji was all smiles, and judging by Hakuro's triumphant chuckle, I suppose that compromise was acceptable from the start. Are you giving in yet, Benamaru? I am not, but if you need a bodyguard during your inspections, I will accept that position. He shrugged. That was as much as he was willing to give. But it still made Mamiji happy, and I wasn't going to force any more out of him. The rest, you could say, is up to them. I'd just reap the profits. So, Lady Mamiji? Just, Mamiji is fine, Sir Rimuru. Hakuro nodded at me as well, not minding the informality. In that case, Mamiji, I'd like to conduct some surveying work to see if a tunnel is possible. Is that all right with you? Yes. Feel free to carefully inspect the range for any potential issues. And if we didn't find any, that meant we could start digging. With the Tengu rapidly softening their stance against us, it looked like construction would go far more smoothly than I thought. Good. Next time I'm over, I'll be sure to say hello to Kaide, Momiji's mother, and I'll make sure Hakuro is with us. So, Lady Elmija, if we have your permission to perform similar surveying and excavation work within Thalion's borders? You may have any permission you like. Erald, please make the arrangements. Elmija so readily passed off responsibility to other people, truly, a living ideal for me to follow. Yes, Your Excellency, Sir Rimuru, I will prepare the necessary permits. However, when construction work begins within Thalion, I request that workers from our nation be brought in for the project. Erald was looking more bedraggled by the minute. Working under such a free-spirited emperor would turn anyone into a gifted servant. But he never forgot to add his own conditions, making sure each of his bullet points was fulfilled. If we handled all construction, that might make things harder for him, I suppose, but I had no objection, so I accepted the offer. And with a promise to help out if we ran into trouble along the way, we wrapped up the conversation. This had started as a review meeting, but now we were rapidly deciding on a variety of important issues. That's because, thanks to the political leaders in the hall, we were cutting through an astonishing amount of bureaucratic red tape all at once. Though, really, it was mostly Elmija's doing. In the midst of this, Yam, who had been silent so far, spoke up. Hey, pal, Sir Rimuru. I got a question, but is now okay to ask it? Simply offering one's opinion in this room packed with the world's biggest names took a lot of courage. Yam must have been maturing as he grew into his new role. What's up, Sir Yam? Well, I'd prefer to explain it myself, but I'm not too well versed in this stuff, so I'd like my lady here to go over it instead. That okay? By which he means Majuran. Because Yam doesn't strike me as the kind of guy who'd taken concubines. My mind was put at ease when Majuran stood up. Sorry I haven't been around lately, Sir Rimuru. Me neither, um, Lady Majuran. Glad you're well. After everything you've done for me, Sir Rimuru, you hardly need to add, Lady, to my name. 
Um, actually, I do, don't I? I knew everyone there, Elmija especially, had been talking really informally all evening, but I didn't think this was something she'd want to get used to. But it was a bit too late for that, I suppose. Let's hear her out, then tackle that subject later. Okay, Majurin, what's your question? Right. This is related to the highway from Blumen to Dorgon running through our nation, as you discussed earlier. Should we consider this a part of the Monster and Man Cooperative Alliance you've mentioned before? Monster and Man Cooperative Alliance? I like the sound of that. You can treat it that way, yes. And I think I like that name for it, too. It encapsulates the ideal we're aiming for really well. Monster and Man working together for each other's benefit. The term monster covered a diverse spectrum, of course, including some species better termed demi-humans. But regardless, that was the exact ideal I had in mind. In the center of this alliance was our nation, Tempest. To the east, the armed nation of Dwargon. To the west, the kingdom of Blumand. To the south, Milam's domain. This alone was a vast alliance of monsters, and to that we could add the human side, centered around Blumand and including Farmanus up north and Thalion down south an expansive amount of human-controlled land. Plus, Blumand was our interface to the Western nations and the people who lived there. If these diverse lands could join hands and form a true team, then I thought the Monster and Man Cooperative Alliance was a fine name for it. Thank you very much. Now, my question. In order to realize this ideal, our nation is willing to cooperate with you as much as we possibly can. Luckily, Diablo has coerced, um, I mean convinced our noble ranks to join our side and they are now very submissive, um, cooperative with us, so I think they will listen to anything we tell them. Thus, as one of the first steps our fledgling nation takes, we are thinking of launching a new national-level project to help support you. Basically, her question was what kind of project they should launch. That's it for this video guys, thank you for always watching my videos and supporting my channel. Shout out to Nightgazer, William Yancey, Ramora Tempest, Mark Manello, CJ Pabra, Rajat Tawes, Mr. KV Man, Heinrich Padron, and Hata 115. And last, but not the least, shout out to Ender Squad 360. I'll see you guys in the next video.